In the majority of exoplanet content on YouTube, only a small handful of planets are ever talked about often. If the average person knows about exoplanets at all, they've usually only heard of places like Kepler-22b, Proxima Centauri b, or 55 Cancri e, and a few other popular ones. The discussions of these planets all have their own problems. People seem to forget that 55 Cancri e is officially named Janssen, for example, or people say Kepler-22b is an Earth-like planet when it doesn't even have solid ground. These are all the most popular exoplanets, and because more people know about them, there's more chances for things to get misinterpreted about them. But it's pretty rare that a new planet gets added to what I'd consider the roster of the most popular exoplanets. And so I'm going to try to do that today. This video is going to be a solid 10 or so minutes of praise for what I think is the most interesting exoplanet we've ever found, Felinciom. Hopefully by the end you'll agree this world is one of the best we've ever found, and deserves to be up there with planets like Proxima b or the Trappist 1 system. So, with that out of the way, here's everything we know about Felinciom. In 2012, a group of scientists using the HARPS telescope noticed that the star GJ3470 was wobbling. This indicated that some object's gravity was pulling on the star, causing it to move around. Additional observations from the TRAPPIST telescope, the same one that found the TRAPPIST-1 system, found the star was also periodically dimming. These observations together confirmed that there was a planet around the star. It quickly became known as GJ3470b. Immediately, people began trying to figure out its size and orbit. It transits the star, causing the dimming effect from Earth's perspective, every 3.3 days. So we pretty quickly figured out this planet had a year length of about 3 days, 8 hours. Every week on Earth is a little more than 2 years on GJ3470b. Not only that, but the planet's orbit was weird for another reason. It doesn't orbit along its star's equator, like the vast majority of planets do. All the planets in the solar system orbit near the plane of the sun's equator, because that's just how planetary systems form. The disk of material that creates planets flattens out into a disk parallel to the star's equator, and so we expect most planets to also be on their star's equator. That's just where all the material they need to form is. But not Felinciom. It's on a polar orbit, perpendicular to the star's equator. This is extremely rare, and we only know of a few planets that do this. There's really no method we know of for a planet to form like this, so we don't really know how polar planets like Felinciom happen. Anyways, if its year length is so short, that means it must be very close to its star. We found a lot of planets like it with short orbits, like Domitium, the first planet around a sun-like star, which you might know as 51 Pegasi b before it was renamed in 2016. Speaking of which, GJ3470b was officially named Felinciom in 2023, named after a blue gemstone from Thailand, the Siamese Sapphire. The reason for this will become apparent later. For the sake of consistency, I'll be using the name Felinciom for the rest of the video, but just be aware this name is new, and a lot of discoveries made about this planet were made when it was still called GJ3470b. If you want to know more about how exoplanets are named, check out my video called How to Name an Exoplanet. Felinciom's mass was determined by how it affected its star. Because of its orbit, we knew it was about 0.03 astronomical units away from its star, 30 times closer than Earth is from the Sun. So, to line up with the radial velocity data gathered from HARPS, it was found that Felinciom had to be somewhere around 12 to 14 times more massive than Earth. Then, based on how much light it blocked when it passed in front of its star, we were able to figure out how big its radius was. Felinciom is about 4.5 times wider than Earth. Both the mass and radius are extremely similar to Neptune, which is 14 times the mass of Earth and 4 times the radius. So, Felinciom is most likely an ice giant like Neptune. You may see a problem here. Felinciom's star, GJ3470, is about half the size of the Sun. It was also named Caucasian along with Felinciom in 2023, so that's the name I'll be using. Based on the luminosity of the star and the planet's distance from it, Felinciom's temperature was calculated at 650 degrees Fahrenheit, or 340 Celsius, or a bit colder than the surface of Venus. This immediately made Felinciom more than just a regular hot planet like the hundreds we've discovered. It was a hot ice giant, and those are rare. Unlike rocky planets, they're made of light gases like hydrogen and helium. Light elements like that are very easily blasted out of atmospheres by radiation. But unlike gas giants, they don't have very strong gravitational pulls. So, ice giants get the worst of both worlds. They simply don't survive very close to stars, because the heat will cause their atmospheres to escape into space. Light gases have an easier time escaping the planet, especially because ice giants have much weaker gravity than gas giants. Most hot ice giants as close to their stars as Felinciom are expected to evaporate in just a few billion years, leaving only their rocky cores behind. This causes the Neptunian desert, the apparent lack of ice giant planets close to their stars. Hot ice giants are rare because they don't last very long. 
Of course, we have found other hot ice giants, like the brightest known planet, Quankoa, or the planet you might know as GJ436b, the planet that might have exotic forms of hot ice below its atmosphere. It was given a name, Awahali, in 2023 along with Valencium. But we don't know very many of them, so every new hot ice giant discovered is immediately important. We know very little about hot ice giants because there's so few of them to study, but Valencium had two things going for it. It transits its star, allowing us to see what types of light it blocks, which helps us figure out what's in its atmosphere, and it's 96 light years away from Earth, which is pretty far but well within the range of space telescopes to study it. And study it they did. After Valencium was discovered, people began observing it to see what was going on. And that's when we discovered that Valencium is evaporating. In 2019 and 2020, observations of Valencium detected helium escaping from the planet. This showed that material from Valencium was currently being blasted off the planet into space by the star's heat at a rate of anywhere from 30,000 to 100,000 tons per second. This would give the planet a massive, easily visible comet tail. This also means that in about a billion years, Valencium could be losing up to half an Earth's worth of mass. A 2013 study suggested that the atmosphere of Valencium was anywhere from 5 to 20% the mass of the planet. Assuming the 20% number is true, and it's losing 100,000 tons of mass per second, then Valencium's entire atmosphere should be completely gone in about 5 billion years. But as the star slowly heats up and it loses its mass, this atmosphere loss will accelerate, so it'll likely lose it all in a significantly shorter amount of time than that. Over the next few years, Valencium's atmosphere became one of the most well-studied of any exoplanet. We know the planet is likely blue in color due to Raleigh scattering, which is partly how it got its name, Valencium being the Thai name for the Siamese sapphire, a type of blue gemstone. We also found that it has low metal content, with depleted amounts of methane and some water vapor. And a few months ago in 2024, a haze made of sulfur dioxide was discovered, indicating that chemical reactions are actively occurring in the atmosphere, likely because of the intense sunlight Valencium receives. We were able to find so much about the atmosphere because it extends far away from the planet, filling its entire Roche lobe. The Roche lobe is essentially the region around an object where everything inside it will be gravitationally bound to that object, not the star that it's orbiting. So we can expect Valencium to have a hot, hazy, extended blue atmosphere with active chemical reactions, and for it to be losing that atmosphere very quickly. With all we know about the system, several observatories began studying it more, hoping to either find out more about Valencium or discover other planets in the system. And one group of amateur astronomers observing the GJ3470 system claimed to have discovered not one, but three planets. One, called GJ3470c, they estimated to be about the size of Saturn in inside Caucasus's habitable zone. If this planet were confirmed, it would have not only become Valencium's first planetary neighbor, but the second planet ever to be discovered by amateur astronomers. But they weren't done yet. Three years later, in 2023, the same group claimed the discovery of two additional planets, GJ3470d and e. They were closer to their star than the hypothesized GJ3470c, and most interestingly, had the exact same orbit. They claimed to have discovered two planets on a horseshoe exchange orbit, a very special, very rare type of orbit where one object oscillates around the same point as another planet. If confirmed, they would have been the first co-orbiting planets ever discovered. Unfortunately, this was not to be, as observations from the TESS telescope showed that all three claimed planets did not exist. There was no Saturn-sized habitable zone planet, or co-orbiting planets orbiting Caucasian. Once again, Valencium was alone. That is, until a few months ago. Completely unrelated to the previous claims of planets, the Troy Project published a paper about their results searching for Trojan planets in 95 exoplanet systems. A Trojan planet is similar to the co-orbital horseshoe planets I talked about earlier. It's a planet stuck in another planet's L4 or L5 Lagrange point, 60 degrees ahead or behind the planet in its orbit respectively. Any object in L4 or L5 shares the same orbit as the planet around its star in a 1 to 1 orbital resonance. Jupiter has thousands of Trojan asteroids at these points, and Earth has a bunch too. But these planets are extremely difficult to form here. The gravitational interactions of the star, the planet whose Lagrange point is stuck in, the planet itself, and other objects in the system should eventually cause Trojan planets to become unstable and get ejected from Lagrange points over time. But there are some very specific circumstances where Trojan planets could remain stable, and the Troy Project was looking for such cases. And they found at least one a 2.6 Earth-mass planet candidate stuck in Valencium's L5 Lagrange point. This planet is not confirmed to exist, but evidence does exist that it's there, and if confirmed, it would be the first Trojan planet ever found. Something that, as I said, would be extremely rare. 
I've made a full video about Falinciam's potential Trojan planet already, so watch that for more information. But essentially, this could be a rocky, roughly Earth-sized planet sharing the same orbit as Falinciam, which is extremely exciting and something we've never seen before. As you've hopefully seen by now, Falinciam is pretty interesting. But it's not just interesting, it's also extremely rare. So, as a recap, Falinciam is a rare type of hot ice giant that we don't see very often, on an extremely rare polar orbit we almost never see, and might even have a Trojan planet, something that is, again, very rare. Just being a hot ice giant was exciting enough. A hot ice giant with a polar orbit immediately made Falinciam one of the most interesting exoplanets ever found. A hot ice giant on a polar orbit that transits its star, allowing us to characterize its atmosphere, made not only one of the most interesting, but one of the most important exoplanets ever found. But a hot ice giant on a polar orbit that transits its star with a Trojan planet is on another level. It might genuinely turn Falinciam from a 1 in a million event to a 1 in a billion or more. I wouldn't be surprised if we never found anything comparable to Falinciam in the entire Milky Way. There's simply no other planet we know of that's even remotely similar to this one. Nothing we know has this combination of unique features, yet alone at a relatively close 96 light years away. And on top of all these amazing things, it has an actual name. It isn't simply known by a boring designation, GJ3470b. It's a hot, evaporating ice giant that's probably blue in color, with an active atmosphere on a weird orbit, and it might not be alone and have a planetary configuration we've never seen before. It also has a massive, easily visible from orbit comet tail. And all of this is why Falinciam is my favorite exoplanet, and I doubt we'll find anything more interesting for a very long time. The fact that so few people even know about this absolutely incredible world is insane to me. This should be one of the most talked about exoplanets ever. In my opinion, at least, it's just so much more interesting than anything we have ever found so far. We have no idea how it got to the way it is today. Why is it on a polar orbit? If the Trojan planet is confirmed to exist, then how has it not been ejected yet? And we only have a limited time to solve all these mysteries, because Falinciam won't be around forever. It's actively being destroyed by its star, and only the rocky core will be left in just a few billion years. There's still a lot we don't know about this place, and a lot we still need to discover, but if we know one thing for certain, it's that we will never see another planet like Falinciam ever again. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, go tell more people about Falinciam.